Hello, I'm going to be taking you through the protocol CSMA CA, which stands for Carrier Sense Multiple Access with Collision Avoidance, which is a absolutely horrible sounding protocol. It's really not as bad as it sounds. Uh, this is a very dramatic name for what is quite a, a, a simple, in essence, protocol. So um, make sure you remember what this is because you might be asked to expand the acronym in an exam. So Carrier Sense Multiple Access with Collision Avoidance, and we write the slash in because there is a version of this for Ethernet, which is slash CD, Collision Detection. But this is for Wi-Fi. So Wi-Fi is a group of protocols. This is one of the protocols which Wi-Fi uses, one of the most important ones. In Wi-Fi, the nodes that are connected to the network are said to have random access to the channel. The channel being where we're actually pushing the data through. In this case, it's the air because we're dealing with wireless communication. So this means, the term random access means that the nodes that are connected can transmit whenever they need to. They're not allocated a time of day to be able to communicate. Whenever they need to transmit something, they will do it um, without restriction. This does produce an issue which this whole protocol is about avoiding, which is the fact that if you transmit at the same time as someone else is transmitting, quite possibly you're going to interfere with their signal and both signals are going to get corrupted. They're going to, um, it's going to result in data loss. And that sounds quite serious. This, is, this term is a data collision, hence why I've got collision in the name here. But it's not as serious as it sounds. This happens all the time. The protocols are designed to deal with this, they'll just retransmit the data. It happens all the time. The only issue is if it's a very busy network, this is likely to happen a lot and it will kind of further slow down the network by having to retransmit the data when it gets lost. So it's better to avoid as many collisions as you can. The forward slash here helpfully splits this protocol up into two aspects. The first of which is the CSMA, the Carrier Sense Multiple Access. And so this has sort of two tenets. The first of which is that the nodes will listen to the shared channel. They have access to, they can receive with their um, network interface card, they can receive the wireless communications, they can listen to the channel. Uh, that's the carrier sense part of this. And if a medium is not idle, if the channel is not idle, if someone else is transmitting, they won't transmit. This is fairly common sense. If you want to avoid a collision, don't transmit when someone else is transmitting because that's just going to cause one. Having said that, collisions can still occur if two nodes are transmitting at the same time. They will have both waited for the channel to be clear and transmitted at the same time, so that is obviously a slight issue. But it's better than if they transmitted without checking first. The second part of the protocol, the CA bit, is trying to counter this, and so this is collision avoidance. And what this does is, to avoid the collisions, it will wait for a random amount of time when the channel is busy. Otherwise. As soon as the channel, so if all these devices are waiting to transmit and they're waiting for the channel to be clear, they're all going to send at the same time unless they are waiting for random amounts of time. So if we can put this in a flowchart, it's really useful. I've seen an exam question which asks you to do this in the exam, so it's useful to be able to do it. Um, so you start off this process, and what you're doing, you're checking to see if the channel is idle. You're doing the sensing, and if it is idle, if it's free, they'll just transmit the data. That's fine, uh, and we can finish up. If it's not idle, it's going to wait for a random amount of time before checking again. If it's, as I say, if they are all waiting at the same time and all transmitting at the same time, we're just going to get an infinite loop of a channel not being uh, idle and also just collisions occurring. Such is the nature of computer science. There are quite a few ways to optimise this avoiding step for back off time. One of them might be if you get stuck in a loop where you keep going round, you might instead wait for slightly longer amounts of time just to try and give the network a chance to get free of its congestion. That might be a good idea. But as long as you know it's random, that's going to be fine for now. If it was, say, wait for five milliseconds, all of the devices are going to wait for five milliseconds and then transmit at the exact same time, producing the issue we talked about before. So it's really important it's random, but apart from that, this is as um, detailed as you need to know. Just to try and throw in another slightly different term, which is often packaged with this topic by exam boards in particular, the fact that for Wi-Fi, for the Wi-Fi protocol, part of the protocol is that when you send a message to a receiver, the receiver will then send you back an acknowledgement message when they receive it, and it's written as ACK, or ACK for short. Once you send a message, the stopwatch is kind of starting, and it will wait to receive the acknowledgement. If it hasn't received in a set amount of time, then the data will be retransmitted because a collision has occurred. And this amount of time might be dynamically calculated, it might be calculated based on how congested the network is. Again, it's another kind of optimization to make this as efficient as possible. I ran out of space, we could add another decision box saying, has the acknowledgement been received? Yes, that's fine. If it hasn't, we're gonna go back to the start 
and wait again and do this whole process. You can't jump back in here because it might be busy and that will cause another collision. In its current form, this protocol does have another issue, which is the hidden nodes problem. And this is all about the fact that we're sort of, <laughs> in a way, orbiting this wireless access point, which is providing the wireless network. So we're going back and forth with this. Maybe this is a wireless router. Um, and the issue here is that C and B can both see each other. They're both within the same range of each other. Uh, so they can communicate for wireless access point and also they can view when each other is communicating. So they can both sense each other. But when A is communicating, they have no idea that A is communicating. Even though A is in range with the wireless access point, they can't view its communications because their range isn't far enough. This means to B and C, A is hidden, and vice versa, to A, B and C are hidden. Which means when they try and sense to see if the channel is idle, they're not going to be able to know if the other person is transmitting. But as soon as the data enters this range, it can start to collide. A way to counteract this problem is to add another aspect onto the protocol, which is RTS, CTS, request to send, clear to send, so the title becomes even more convoluted. But this, what the, the concept of this is quite simple. Once, it's once the node is determined that the channel is clear, it will double check by sending a request to send message to the wireless access point, and then if the channel is clear, it will get a clear to send message back. So it will get the all clear back from the wireless access point, and it will transmit. And so if we just look at this in terms of the entire flowchart, this bit here is just the same as before. We've still got the core protocol underneath. But once it has got so before we just transmit the data once we determine that it's clear but because of a hidden nose problem we're now going to transmit first of all an RTS just to request access just to double check in other words and it'll get one back and we can transmit it if it doesn't get one back it might get a negative or it might not actually receive one it'll go back and just wait for a random amount of time and start this process again so if we look at how this fixes the hidden nose problem well, I wouldn't say fixes but makes it better is because even if a node is hidden from another node, it can still receive at least one of these messages. Because the wireless access point is the core of this whole network, it's all seeing, it's all knowing, it knows whether the channel is idle or not because it has access to all the devices that are connected to it. So if this device here is sending a message to the wireless access point, it will first of all send the ready to send message, which this device here can't see, but that's okay because it can see the clear to send message, that's it within its range. And then the packet can be sent with less risk of collision occurring. To maybe reiterate, without this additional step, if both devices wanted to communicate at the same time, they'll both follow the CSMACA part and wait for the channel to be clear. They'll sense that it's clear because in their point of view it is, and they'll both transmit at the same time, and this may cause a collision in this part of the network. And obviously the wireless access point can't process both messages at the same time, so one of them is going to have to retransmit, if not both, if a collision does actually occur. So this step is... Um, good for avoiding the collisions but it does it does add an overhead to each packet because you have this additional back and forth which has to occur before the packet sent so more time is taken and the network itself may get worse the congestion may get worse because you're having to send all these other messages these messages themselves could get uh, they could collide so it just makes the whole problem slightly worse in, in that case um, so it is relatively common to deactivate this part for small packets because the small packets if they do have to be resent that's not really a big deal it's very quick to resend them but a larger packet it might be worth adding this additional overhead to make sure that it doesn't have to be retransmitted